When you think about applying economics to policy, it seems to me you say, one, what does an economist bring to the table? Incentives. Yes. Uh, that's one. Um, what about equilibrium? That somehow we have to get, there's an equilibrium that's going to be out there, and if I establish it, we're going to have to get to a new equilibrium. Yes. You got any examples yes, or lessons I, about that? Yes. By the way, something in terms of applied work, I learned a lot from you on that point. I think that's the way you always think about problems. You always think about how the new equilibrium is going to look like and so on. But I do think that if you think about incentives, you, can, you have to think, we just had this discussion, you have to think of people's reactions to that. i give you an example. The governor of Rio uh, tried to control these areas in which drug dealers were dealing drugs without any, any presence of the state. You know, this was a common thing. The argument I was giving was this one about areas like that are prone to be disputed with violence, and that's where a lot of violence is going to occur. He did that and he was somewhat successful. Then, just by chance, reading the internet, I found this sociology master thesis. And the thesis was about, she had inquired people where they bought drugs, and now they're buying drugs from other students. So she says, students now became drug dealers. Now, for me, that was a positive outcome. That was a good part of the equilibrium. Um, but I mean, this person connected the policy, but she didn't understand there was a better equilibrium than the past one. But that's exactly about thinking about equilibrium. You know that there are going to be consequences. There's going to be entry into that business because people demand drugs. But the entrants are less likely to use as much violence as the other ones because people are buying drugs from people they knew. Now, you mentioned when you got to Chicago, the people like George Stigler were here. And, and yeah. one of the things George always talked about was a view of government as an equilibrium outcome, like not what do they want to do, but what's going to end up happening when the government gets involved and regulation yeah. and how regulation plays itself out. Mm -hmm. What's been your practical experience with regard to kind of that view of the yeah, world? I think policymakers often don't think about that. So there's a lot of things that get done because they only think about like the first stage, you know, well, if I raise this taxes, I should get more money. That's the first stage. Now, they didn't think about the incentives, that, like in Brazilian society, for instance, the incentives that creates for informality. And so they always forget this. And, and as a result, they could actually, you know, I'm very doubtful of Lafa curve here in, in the United States, but I'm much, I've seen much more cases where at least I wouldn't know if you get a Lafa curve if taxes actually go down, but certainly the amount of taxes you collect. It's much smaller than what you first intended. The first exercise was saying, well, people are paying 10 million of taxes. If I now raise the, from 10 to 11 percent, I'm going to collect 11 million of tax. And that view is usually wrong. In Brazil, we have, um, it's relatively easy to be informal. So lots of firms go into informality when you raise certain types of taxes and so on, or just make it difficult for certain to operate legally. And as a result, what you see on the other side is that firms tend to be too small and too inefficient because one of the ways that you can hide as an informal firm is to be small. So there's a lot of consequences to that that you always have to think about what does a policy that make it more expensive to operate, to operate formally, what does, for instance, a tax, what does that cause to the economy as a whole? My lesson studying the case in Brazil is that there's a lot of that going on, that policies are not thought well enough and we have a lot, of, a lot of these consequences. And of course, George was, you know, he did, even in his academic work, he pointed to a lot of these consequences, very important consequences, the regulation of railroads, for instance, and so on. I mean, that's a good example because at the end of the day, those movements have an effect on revenues, but right. that may not even be their biggest effect on the economy. It may exactly. be the inefficiencies that result. Exactly the change in the size of firms, the type exactly. of industries that develop. That get developed. Brazil, I think, suffers a lot from that. We have a combination which is ideal to have bad consequences. We have a very high nominal rates and relatively little enforcement. Now, when you combine the two, I mean, you can see what you're going to end. You're going to end up with a lot of informality. 
But then sometimes the solutions are also very bad. I, I give you an example. So one solution that, that uh, was, was done in Brazil re relatively recently is to say, okay, we have a problem with informality of small firms. We're going to create a special, easy uh, system for small firms. It's going to be a cap. Any firm below that is going to have what they, what they call the simple, which really is the simple system. Okay? Once you get above that size, you're out of there. So what have you done? You kind of formalize a lot of firms, but you have not eliminated any of the bad consequences because the bad consequences were primarily the firms were too small. Before, firms were too, more, too small to hide from the tax man. Now they're too small not to be subject to, to hide a very from the complicated tax. system. <laughs> to hide from the tax, exactly. So, so they are they're perfectly legal, but we have exactly the same problems with inefficiency. And now, not thinking about what are the incentives you're creating? So you're creating an incentive, and people now have verified that this is done by, by either by this different method, but most of it is by the amount of total sales. And you get, of course, as you'd expect, a group in your firms that you don't expect just below the threshold. So lots of firms got off of informality, but they did not eliminate their inefficiencies. And we have the same problem in Brazil that we had before. But that's something an economist I would have thought a good economist, you know, somebody thinking about incentives, could have told them beforehand. Yeah, so it wasn't the informal versus formal label that was the major consequence of exactly. the policy. It right. was the inefficiencies, inefficiencies. which you, you institutionalized almost by putting in this new by system. By putting this cap, this new system, yeah. And so now there's a new fight, which is, you know, to make at least a more smooth transition, you know, which could ameliorate a little. It's not going to solve it. I mean, the, as I say, the... The thing is not to, to create a simple system for a small firm, but to simplify for everyone. That's the way that you eliminate that, that force.